Hey guys, welcome to another episode of VTech Academy. You're about to get schooled. All right, guys, uh, today's subject is going to be axle length. Uh, the question's been asked a bunch of times uh, to the VTech Academy how do I know if I have the right length axles? And basically, if you order your axle from a place like Passport or Drive Shaft Shop or Insane Shafts or, or Axles, you're probably going to be okay because mm -hmm. most of those companies are going to ask you what your application is, what your chassis is, and they're going to just send you the correct axle to begin with. But uh, not everybody's like that. Some people like to use what I like to call internet recipes. Yeah, uh, our friend Emiliano actually, when he case swapped to ZK, I think he used like base model DP3 axles or something like that he ran on the internet would work. And I used OEM ones at first, he made it all the way to Ibach in California on, tried to go down the drag strip and pop the uh, passenger side out of the inner joint. Uh, so we towed it back to the hotel, replaced it with a uh, one from like uh, AutoZone or something like that. And we uh, a reman a re reman re re one made about 100 people in the hotel and it popped out again. And actually, took out a oil filter that time. Yeah, and basically the majority of the problems if your axles aren't the right length, it's it's going to be a problem with the inner joint. So the inner joint is constructed like that. There's uh, three bearings that basically ride inside this cup. Uh, if your axle is too long, what's going to happen is these bearings is when the when the axle is at a side angle and as it comes around, the bearing is acting a bottom out inside the bottom of the cup. And what that's going to do is as they go around, it's going to cause a vibration. In fact, if in extreme events, you can actually feel it in the steering wheel. And the other thing besides just causing the vibration, it's going to eventually beat these bearings up and they're going to cause them to fail. So uh, you may want to take a look at that. When the axle is too short, what you'll have is the bearings riding at the very outside of the cup. So as the axle comes around, you could have it come out far enough to pop out and take the whole inner joint out, which is what happened to Emiliano. Take right. the tripod out of the inner joint. And it's, it's funny, it was, it was okay without accelerating, but once you accelerate and the engine moves a little bit extra, then you get that little yeah. bit extra movement. Yeah, just a little bit angle to it. Yeah. So um, when you have your axle in your car, you can take a look at it and you kind of tell what it looks like. If you see, uh, it compressed too much. See how the bellows are all really close together here. That means that you're probably have an axle that's too long. Um, on an axle that is too sh too short, uh, the bellows is really extended, and sometimes you can even feel the bearing if you run your finger around mm -hmm. the inside edge. You can actually feel the little hump of the bearing. Uh, either one of those conditions is pretty bad. Anyway, we're going to show you how to measure axle. Make sure you have the right length one right now. This process for doing this is fairly simple. You're going to need a jack, you're going to need something to take off the axle nut, uh, and something to do some measuring with. You can use a tape measure, or if you got a pair of dial calipers or digital calipers, that makes it even easier. Let's start off. We're going to jack up the front of the car until the axle is parallel with the ground. That's the point at which the axle needs to be the shortest. Step one is to go ahead and get your center caps off. Our next step is to remove the axle nut. I had that torqued on. Now that we've got that out, we want to compress the axle all the way. There we go. Don't go any further. And last, we want to measure. Okay, so our axle is about 0.2 inches protruding from the center. And that's actually within our ideal range. We want it to make sure that it doesn't protrude any more than a quarter inch and doesn't and isn't recessed any more than a quarter inch. When we did the measuring, we measured to the end of the stub all the way down here to the surface where the nut typically pulls on. That's the, that's the critical dimension, how far that is. If it's too long, you're gonna find the bellows too compressed. And if it's 
too short, the axle bearing's gonna be too close to the edge. We don't want either of those situations. All right, now that we know we've got a good axle length, we're gonna go ahead and put it all back together. So that's how you measure the axle while it's in the car to make sure it's the proper length. But for peace of mind when you're buying a remanufactured or aftermarket axle, you can actually take out your original axle and measure that length and then compare it to the remanufactured axle make sure they're the same length. So this is how you measure your axle when it's out of the car. First you stand it up straight, you want to compress it all the way down, make sure you got it all the way down. Then normally you'd use a level but we don't have one, so we're going to use a straight edge. Put it on the very top of the axle, make sure the nut's out of the way. Use a measuring tape to measure it. And now we have our compressed overall length that we can compare it against the new axle that we purchased from whoever. Mm -hmm. Anyway, guys, thank you very much for joining us for another episode of VTech Academy. And I hope you learned something new today. If you liked what you saw, please consider subscribing. If you know somebody who has axle problems, share this video with them. Remember, buy a t-shirt. We'll see you later. Uh -huh.